I suck at intros. Why am I doing things? It doesn't make sense. Hello, my name is Aiden and I am the owner of Backdraft Innovations. Today I'm going to show you how to get into HPA for as cheap as possible by using my HPA engine, the Backdraft Phoenix. First thing we're going to do, meet the engine. This is the packaging that it comes in. Uh, it was originally supposed to be a mailing tube. It was going to get held together by the shipping label, dropped off, and it would just show up in your mailbox like this. But USPS decided that this looked too fun to throw. Listen to this noise. Isn't that satisfying? Let's dig in and check out the swag. These are real plates. You can slap that sucker on your vest. Represent. The other thing you get is the FCU. This is what brings a lot of the features to the engine. This little guy is important. Uh, it goes on your mounting screw for the FCU. Most FCUs will only have like full auto and semi-auto and that's all you get. But with this one, you get burst, binary, semi-auto and full auto, as well as semi-locking. The way that you adjust it is super simple. You just turn these two little dials. We actually have an alternative FCU, which works with wire harnesses and uh, Polar Star style trigger boards. You can get your hands on the V2 trigger board as well as V3 trigger board. There is a small upcharge for these because of the harness and the extra connectors and stuff. It brings up the cost a bit, but it's only $15, so it doesn't really make that much of a difference to the overall price. The next thing we have is the IGL, which has a 90 degree fitting. Uh, it's very simple IGL. We also have the maintenance kit. The maintenance kit includes lube, replacement O-rings, the quick connect fitting for your IGL, and an additional 90 degree fitting in case this one breaks, or in case you wanna use your own inner grip line, you can put that connector on it and use it with the Phoenix. The thing you guys are probably most excited for is the engine itself, the Phoenix HPA engine. It comes standard with an AK or an M4 nozzle. Both are kept in stock and able to ship out right away. But if you choose to install it in a different type of gun, you're able to, you just need a custom length nozzle. It adds a little bit of lead time because they're made to order. Another optional accessory is the volume reducers. These decrease the amount of air that's stored in the engine, which can make your engine a little bit more efficient especially if you have a super short barrel. And the STL files for these are included for free with every beta kit. So if you wanna print your own or order some printed, you can. And if you don't wanna print them or don't have access to a printer, you can just buy them from my website and I'll include them with your purchase. So the engine and all the accessories are $250. $230 for beta testers because there's a coupon code in the discount, or in the, what am I saying? $230 for beta testers because there's a $20 coupon code in the description. But that's great. I have an engine. What do I do with it? I need a body to put it in and I do not recommend the prison wallet. Do not put it up your butt, please. That does not, that is not what this is designed for. So we're gonna go from cheapest to most expensive. The number one option is most people who are getting into HPA already own an AEG. Uh, buy this and install it into your AEG. Uh, ram it in there. In the gun, not your body. So that can be the cheapest since it's money you already spent and you're recycling a gun into something better. The second cheapest option was presented by a amazing YouTuber, Jonah Cowie, who runs Kraken Airsoft. He is uh, one of my favorite channels, and he's actually made two videos already about the Phoenix, which only makes him even more of a favorite of mine. Thank you, Jonah. Please don't get eaten by a whale. What he did is just 3D printed an entire gun body, uh, and the build turned out really nice. He made, I think it was a SIG MCX. It looks pretty darn awesome, but in order for that to actually be cheap, you have to already have a 3D printer. If you have to buy a 3D printer, then it becomes one of the more expensive options, but you could also print as many guns as you wanted. You could buy these things in bulk. There is a bulk pack on my website, and you could install them and sell them if you wanted to. Make a small business out of it. Who knows? I don't give a crap. Stonks! Now on to the third cheapest option, which is going to be buying just a body. You can buy it used from somebody at a field or in a Discord group or, you know, Facebook airsoft groups. I would recommend trying to shoot for like $100 or less to get a gun body with the gearbox and like the grip and stuff. 
And now the leastest, cheapest option, which is to buy a gun and rip all the guts out and install an HPA engine into it. It's not like it's an unwise financial decision, it's just one of the more expensive options uh, because you're buying something new just to change it. So I mean, obviously I already did the build, but uh, that's the next part of the video, so we're just gonna go on into that. The first thing we're gonna need to do is take the upper off, which is pretty simple. Uh, just uses one Allen key. She's slow, but she's working. One thing I recommend, whenever you disassemble something, if it's possible to put the screw back where it came from, uh, do it, because then you will not lose parts, and you'll have every screw going back where it was supposed to be. I'm also gonna take the stock off at this point. To do that, you just pull down on this thing, uh, and then you can slide it off. Hmm. There we go. Take that off. It's kind of a long one. Then you got the spring and this. And again, like I said, best practice, in my opinion, is to put these back together while you're setting them aside. In this gun, there are four grips, or four screws holding the grip on. I literally have a drill sitting there. Do I use it? No. I like to screw, what can I say? There's not always a right and a wrong way, but if you look really closely, you can see there's like little indents on that pin. Uh, you wanna go towards the side that has the indents, because then you can just pull it out. You don't have to drive, drive it through. There we go. Should come out relatively easy, just like that. Cool. And there we go. Gearbox is opened. Pretty much what you're left with. Um, just a blank, plain gearbox and an engine to install into it. I'm going to be installing the upgraded FCU, but both are totally functional. And don't forget, if you're installing this one, you put that little O-ring onto the screw before installing it. Trigger board, what I'm gonna do is set it into place, align the screw hole, and tighten it down. That is all you have to do, and then what I like to do at this point is check to make sure that the, the selector plate touches the switch on the back. If you see that your engine has play, like this gearbox does, most gearboxes will, um, I like to space it so that the engine is as far forwards as possible. This guy, I'm gonna put it there and I'm gonna wrap it really tight around the front here. The cap off for this is run a razor blade along that edge, cutting just the electrical tape, not cutting into the engine itself. And that, in my opinion, is the simplest way to try and space your engine forwards. I need to run the wire harness, like that. Put the trigger spring back on. Drop it into place. Make sure the electrical tape is firmly attached to the engine. And drop that back on. The way you put this on is you slide it over so that the threads are facing the end of the inner grip line and then you push this on, and then you tighten this down. This is usually the part where beta testers get their first blood pressure spike. We've got air connected, we've got a battery connected, we've got everything going right, but the trigger's not doing anything. What's going wrong? The issue is most likely that you're in full auto. Secondary fire mode is disabled by default. In order to program it, you hold it for at least three seconds. And then, depending on what mode you wanna go into, let's say I wanna go into full auto. One, two, three, and then I release the trigger. And now, we're in full auto. So, it's totally fine, just calm your tits, 
it's okay, nothing is broken. So the next step is going to be installing back into the gun. Good enough. Now we have officially installed it into a Lancer Tactical and let's see if it still works. That feels badass. Next step is chrono testing. Now it is time to talk about metrics. How well does the engine perform in different categories? I'm gonna speed run this because the video is probably getting pretty long at this point. I don't know. I'm gonna try and trim it down, but we'll see. The efficiency is about the same as a Polar Star Jack. The accuracy is definitely dependent on a lot more variables than just the engine, um, but depending on your build, you can expect to get pretty good accuracy. I know some beta testers are hitting like people sized targets at 175 feet. Uh, it's about 80 washing machines away from my metric viewers. The rate of fire can go as high as 45 rounds a second, which is pretty fast. I would say 20 to 30 rounds a second is definitely doable in most builds. Instant. Installing it is the same exact process as pretty much every other engine. Um, yeah, there's nothing special about the install. For fire modes, you have obviously semi-auto and full auto, but you also have three round burst and binary and semi-locking. So that's more than almost every other FCU on the market, unless you talk about some of the premium FCUs like the Gorilla. And the Gorilla is like $130, so that's barely even comparable. And now the big selling point cost. A Gate Pulsar costs $340 right now and it's on sale. Normally it's $380. That includes an FCU. The Inferno costs $330 with their basic FCU or $395 with their premium FCU. The Jack costs $350 with their FCU. The F1 costs $380. The F2 costs $470, still with less fire modes. And the Kythera, which is a semi-auto only mechanical engine, you'd assume it would be cheaper, but it's still $290, which is $40 more than MSRP and $60 more than you'll actually be spending as a beta tester. Now would be a good time to mention that we're getting really close to releasing and the beta tester discount is probably gonna go away soon. So if you want to get in on it, now is the time. Just like before, if any changes are made to the engine between now and release, uh, those parts that changed will be available for free for all the beta testers. You just have to pay for the shipping. I do have one question for you. What's the most you've ever lost on a coin toss? Because I'm about to lose one engine or two engines. If it's heads, I'm going to give away two engines to somebody who comments on this video and shares it. Uh, if it's tails, I'm going to give away one. So let's, let's see what happens, how many people are going to get an engine. That was a little out of frame, but I don't even know what it is yet. It's heads. I believe that said two, so let's let's go. Uh, two people who comment on this video and share it are going to get an engine. So if you want to enter the giveaway, I'll announce the winner in my next video. Um, thanks. Support the Phoenix. Um, share the video, I guess. Uh, maybe, is that the subscribe button?